guys, Chicky456 here, back with another video. And this video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be pretty different. It's not like a custom video, but it kind of is, because I'll be actually ranking each of my customs that I have made. This is heavily inspired by one of the YouTubers I like to watch, known as Mariah Elizabeth. She's definitely one of the big inspirations to me for my channel, and why I keep going with it, and how I've kind of actually like explored other different kinds of arts. She's also another reason why I actually began more so talking to my camera and the camera in my videos when um, I do customs instead of just quickly speeding through the creating of the customs, I guess you could say. So yeah, she's definitely one of my big inspirations. I really love her personality. I love her squishy videos. Once upon a time, there was a little bunny hopping through the forest. Excuse me, little bunny. What? Um, we're under the rainbow. What? And I recently saw her ranking her all her squishies that she's made in 2020. And I kind of want to do that with the customs I've had. Because they're all sitting here on this like shelf I have over in the corner of my room. And... I'm just thinking, like, I could do that. <laughs> It'd be fun to do that, to see, like, which one's my favorite and which ones are not. Even though all my customs I've made kind of hold a special place in my heart, because they were all fun to make, um, of course there's ones that I love more compared to others. So that's what this video is going to be about. And on a side note, there's actually going to be three different videos. I decided to split this up into kind of, like, three different parts. This video is going to be about just all my little pet shop customs. And there's going to be one that's going to be my Littles Pet Shop customs, but they're from the Mr. Man and Little Mrs. series that I did. And then the final one's going to be all my My Little Pony customs. It would just be a lot easier to split those up instead of including them in one video, because it would be extremely really long then. So yeah, it's going to be three different videos, and we're going to be starting off with just all the regular or other kind of Littles Pet Shop customs I've made in the past. So anyways, let's get started with the video. So coming in at 30 and the very last of the list is my Jojo Siwa custom. The reason she's at the bottom of the list is I don't really know her personally. Like I know she is like a celebrity, but other than that I don't know much about her. I know she became a meme for a while. Um, but other than that I don't really know much about her. I know my little cousins like to watch her. But I mean this, this custom was just one that was a random request by someone, and this is when I was open for request, and I decided to go ahead with it. I do like how it did come out though, she does look really cute. I really like the little diamonds I added for her earrings. The paint on it looks really nice as well. But again, I don't really know much about her, and this was just another random custom, so yeah, that's why she's kind of on the very bottom of the list. But overall, I think she still came out really cute. And coming in at 29 is my snow Christmas mouse custom. The reason this one's on the lower list too is because this was another like one of my very first customs. This was around the time when I was really starting customizing and getting into customizing Littles Pet Shops and I was still working out different things. This is when I still didn't care for really painting the eyes. I would just try to use the figure's eyes. Overall I would say though I really like how this turned out. It was a request by my friend Allie and I just really like the colors, the red and the green. I also really love the tail, how I went with a uh, candy cane peppermint theme. I thought that was really cute. Even like the little buttons to make it look like she was a snowman. The little red nose. I do love the Christmas theme to it. But again, this because this is a very old first time custom I did, it did get pushed lower on the list. Because of course, as I went on, my customizing got better and I like the other figures <laughs> compared more to my old ones. Coming in at 28 is Ed from Ed's World. The reason this one's lower on my list is I never grew up watching Ed's World or really knew much about it. I know it was very popular and has a huge fan base, and I do know the creator passed away. Along, um, this was another custom that was a random suggestion, and I decided to go for it. I really think it came out cute. I love the little expression on his face along with the little green jacket looks cute on him. But again, too, this is just lower on the list because I didn't know much to this show. I don't know anything about it, really. That's why it would be lower on the list. But overall, I think this one really came out cute. Again, I really love the little expression on him. And I think the colors came out really nice, too. And coming in at 27 is my rarity custom. 
reason she's lower on the list too is this was made during a video where it was like a challenge with my friend, uh, um, Alyssa again. And what we did was we kind of like challenged each other to making a custom. I picked Rarity. She did a Coachella theme. And for me, I feel like mine was way too simple compared to hers. She actually did like, you know, the Coachella theme, which has a lot of colors, a lot of decorations. Mine was just Rarity, which as you can see is like literally only two colors. I mean, she is really cute. I love how the eyes came out, but to me, I felt like that was way too simple. And this too just seems like a really simple custom. Nothing too much when it comes to the details. Again, I do like the little gems that I would add for earrings. I thought that was really cute. And the eyes came out really nice too, but overall I feel like this is just really simple compared to what my friend made. So yeah, that's why she's lower on the list too, is I feel like this one was just too simple and easy. And coming in at 26 is the Warden from Super Jail. Now this custom was a suggestion by a friend and I decided to go for it because I did actually used to watch Super Jail growing up behind my parents' back. We had Comcast, so on demand I would watch this show. I really love how this came out. The glasses are cute. I love that I added a little bow tie. He's got a golden stand because, you know, he's the warden. Um, I do like the clothes on him as well. I, I did really good with getting like the jacket and splitting up like what his shirt was and his pants. Don't care much for how the hair came out. The hat's cute. I like the tail too and the little wings that I did different colors for them. So yeah, I would say he's really cute and I do like how it came out. And again, um, just like the others before, it's he's lower on the list because he was one of my first around time customs when I was really getting into these. And the other ones, of course, is like I have proved over time, kind of, you know, pushed him lower down the list is what we'll say. Okay, coming in next at 25, might be really hard to see, uh-oh, he doesn't want to stand, is my small Chewy custom. Reason this guy is lower on the list, because I know you probably guys are probably thinking, this is your guinea pig, why is he so low on the list? This version of him is, it's he's just small, and not much detail was put on him. Yeah, it does look like him with the coloring like the eyes and different kind of like features on him, details, I couldn't really get that much on him because he's so small. <laughs> he's a little tiny boy. So overall that's why this custom is lower on the list. Can you guys even see him? He's, he's too small. That's another thing. He's too small. You drop him in the rug, you're gonna lose him forever. And he doesn't want to stand. <laughs> That's another little issue. He's too small, and his little feet are too small, and his head's too big. <laughs> but yeah, that's why he's lower on the list, is just not that much details to him. And it was kind of like an easy custom to paint. I mean, it's he's two colors. I'm sorry, Chewy, but you're only two colors. <laughs> Coming in next at 24, which some people might freak out knowing he's lower on the list, is my OC toy version of Birthday Boy Blam from One Night at Flumpty's known as Holiday Boy Blast. And again, the reason he's lower on the list is he was a custom that was older and it was still when I was getting into customizing. I would say he is really cute. I do like how he turned out. Or in a sense too, he's kind of weird looking. Those eyes. I think it's those eyes that are kind of creeping me out. He's got those eyes. Why did I paint them like that? That's when I didn't care for painting over the eyes because I was worried the eyes would look ugly because I wasn't that good with drawn eyes. But again, I do really like him. But again, it's just these other ones that I have created over time did beat, like, beat him, you know? They pushed him down. Like that. And coming in at 23 is my Halloween little pumpkin scenery. I know this really isn't much of a custom, but I decided to include it because it does have little pet shop involved in it. And this one's kind of lower on the list too because sadly I don't really like how it came out. Like as you could tell, the super glue gel that I used kind of made the grass all like crusty. I plan on maybe trying to fix it because I just don't like how it looks out and it's got like a foggy texture to it. But I would say it is cute, the little bottle of Witch's Brew with the little mouse and just the fact that I was able to turn this little hot, red hot chili pepper hat for Lilith's Pet Shop into a pumpkin. 
and just make it a cute little Halloween scenery. But again, the super glue that I used just made it look all like crusty in the inside and I don't really like how that looks. So I, pr I plan to fix this if I can in the future, but right now it's just eh. And coming in at 22 is another little scenery I made, which is the little fish bowl. I really like how it turned out. I think it looks really cute and adorable. Um, I just, again, I included this as well because it's little as pet shop themed. But it also doesn't have any real customizing to it. I mean, I just took one of the little small ones in a little shell and put them inside this. And I used another hat from the Littlest Pet Shop. Like, I think it was like the food or it was like the food series they were doing. Little cans. That's what it was. They were like little tin cans that you would open. But yeah, I just kind of like how this came out. I thought it was really cute. It's a little cute scenery. It would be really cute too for any like Littlest Pet Shop people that like do videos with Littlest Pet Shops to maybe use it as like a little background scenery kind of thing. Or this is like their little pet crab in a fishbowl. So yeah, I thought this one came out really cute. And coming in at 21 is another Littlest Pet Shop scenery thing I did. And it was for my Easter, little Easter scene that I made out of a snow globe my cousins got for me. A little snow globe kit. I really like how this came out. I think it's really cute. Again, too, this is more so just gluing stuff together while I did just customize the little bunny. But overall, I think it came out really cute. I love the little cross that I did add because it is Easter. <laughs> I just had to include that. And I really love the little chicken and the egg. I got some carrots, little rocks, a little bird. It just, I like it too because it helps me, these kind of things help me use like the smaller things you get with little pet shops that you might not want or can figure out anything, can't really figure out anything to use them for. Like the carrots and the little ribbon and even the little bird and the um, golden egg thing I got back there. <laughs> I didn't really know what to do with those, and making crafts like this helps me um, use those instead of throwing them away or getting rid of them. But yeah, I would say this one came out really cute. But again, it's lower on the list too, just for the fact it's a scenery kind of thing, and you just glued stuff together. And um, all my other customs, of course, are ones that I had to like paint and customize compared to this. Coming in next as number 20 is my Alice Angel Custom. I will give you a warning right now. These next ones are going to be my Bendy and the Ink Machine Customs. They're all lower on the list because I never actually really played the game or got involved in it as much as other people did with the fandom. Um, and while these are some of like my most popular videos I've seen on my YouTube channel, um, I feel like a lot of people don't look like these either because it's cringy. These videos did come around the whole time when cringy was very popular, I would say. And was really like a thing people would just say to try to tear other people down, like saying your artwork's cringy, your videos are cringy. I've had my whole channel called Cringe, but that was on a different video. But yeah, I, I feel bad for saying stuff like that did push me away. And I know people say, don't let that get to you and stuff, but it's... It's hard at times. It's like, okay, I did all this work and I made these cute little customs that I'm proud of and then having people just say, oh, your stuff's cringy, kind of just wears down on you. I do like how Alice Angel did come out though. I had like a butterfly figure and I didn't know what to do much and I'm like, oh, she's an angel. This will work. Perfect. The little Halo's cute too. I think that's really cute. It's kind of hard to tell though, like because of her hair, just the way I have it wrapped around her head, it looks pretty weird. But I say, um, I say she's pretty cute. And following right behind her is the Boris crew. We got good old regular Boris, and then we have dead Boris. I don't really care much for dead Boris that much, just because I couldn't get rid of the glitter on the top. So it looks pretty weird with how he's got like a glitter fur <laughs> on the top of his head. I do really love the little stand I made. I think that came out really cute. Cause, and it fits him. I mean... Okay, that, that's just sounding awkward now. <laughs> it fits dead, Boris. And we got the little crossed out eyes. I even went so far as to like detail his little paws. What was I doing? <laughs> but I do like how this one came out more. Because I like the eyes and the features on him. And um, how I painted his little jacket. It was like a dog figure that had a little jacket on him. I thought it was really cute. 
Yeah, this one looks more cuter and happier compared to just this dead one here. Yeah. And coming in at 18 is the Bendy crew. We have Ink Bendy and then just regular Bendy. I really like how regular Bendy came out. I mean, he looks adorable. I love that little smile on him and the little bow. And then we got Ink Bendy, and I found it really cool too how I was able to use one of those thought bubbles the littlest pet shops were coming with. Like, I didn't know what I was gonna do with those, and I'm like, it's all blotchy looking like ink. That would be cool to use. And too, I really like these figures in a sense because um, they were the smaller littlest pet shops. And you would, um, those are kind of pretty, um, those are harder, I would say, to paint on at times, especially when you gotta get details in. Bendy kind of looks like a squirrel here. He does, but he's a little cat. I think he's like a little Persian cat. But overall, I really do like how these came out. I think they're really cute, but they are lower on the list just because they were um, of a fandom and lore that I didn't really get into or involved in with. And I'll be honest too, I kind of made these custom videos just because Bendy was really popular during that time. I'm like, this could help bring in a crowd, maybe. Uh. Okay, so this next custom doesn't really fit in with any of these videos I have planned, along with uh, this being a totally different figure. But I decided to include her because she does sit on my shelf and with the others, and I just decided to include her and not to leave her out. And I, um, I never made a video for her, because this was um, when I was really starting to first customize, and I didn't really have a whole bunch of Littlest Pet Shop figures. But I did have an extra Mistrevis figure, so I decided to paint that and customize her into Crimson from Total Drama Redonkulous Race. I like how the hair turned out. I thought that was really cool, along with adding the little hoop ring for her necklace. The bat came out pretty crappy. I don't care for how the bat came out, but this is when I was first customizing. Um, kind of some backstory to her as well. When I was customizing this was also, this is gonna get pretty deep, I'm sorry. This was also the night my grandma passed away. We found out she had stomach cancer and she was put in the hospice care at our house and she finally passed away that later that night. And of course we were having all family over and that stuff, and I kind of just, I would say, shut down. I just stayed in my room, and even though I had family over come up and hug me and stuff, I didn't really cry or anything. I kind of just shut down and worked on this custom, and I just wanted to focus on that, and I didn't want to talk to anybody. I stayed up until, like, I think 1, like 1.40 or something like that a.m. So this custom kind of has, like, some backstory to it. It was, I was just finishing it up, and I just wanted to focus on that. Because it was helping me keep my mind focused, like, and not think about, you know, my grandma passing. The next custom coming in at 16 is the Pinkie Pie custom I did for the video of how I showed, like, step by step making a little pet shop custom. I really think she's cute, and this came out really good compared to what this horse originally looked like. I know this came from the set, I think, of Little's Pet Shops that was going through that phase that no one liked. Like, they looked really weird. People were kind of, like, weirded out by how they looked. They did not look anything like the old, um, styles of Little's Pet Shop. I mean, I'm sorry, look at this head shape. And then look at those legs. Why is that one out like that? It's weird. But I think I turned it into a really cute custom. I like how she came out. I really love the colors, especially the shiny pink. Her cutie mark looks cute. The eyes look good. Ugh, hello. <laughs> but I think she came out really cute compared to what this originally looked like. Next coming in is another series I'm working on with these little pet shop customizations. And coming in at 15 is the Happy Tree Friends character Giggles. The chipmunk, I believe, is what she is. She came out really cute. I really love how the red bow came out. Um... Yeah, she's kind of lower on the list compared to the other customs of the Happy Tree Friends I did, because, as you can see, she's pretty much pretty basic. Just two colors of pink. Um, she, her form, her base, or however her shape is, was pretty easy to color. And there wasn't really much details I needed to add it to her compared to the others. But still, she came out pretty cute. 
I think she looks really adorable. And following right next to her is number 14 is the Happy Tree Friend character, Cuddles. I think he came out super adorable. I love the little pom-pom tail I added along with the little fluff of fur on the top of his head since he does have that. I think it came out really cute. I love how his eyes turned out. And I even gave him little pink feet to match his slippers he wears. But again too, this was kind of like a custom that was easy to paint. He was all mainly one color. Not much details added to him, minus the little fur and fluff on him. But I still think he came out pretty adorable. Coming in next at number 13 is the one that started this series, which was Lammy and Mr. Pickles. I think she came out really cute. I love how the white um, fur turned out on her, like her white wool, the painting I did on it. I thought that came out really good. Um, the little bow looks cute on her. I also love how Mr. Pickles turned out, but it is kind of hard to see him. He was the little cow figure that came with her. I don't know why, because cows are bigger than sheep. So why did they make this little tiny cow with the sheep? It's weird. The little top hat's cute. I even added little drops of blood on his horns because he's the one that does all the killing in the show when it comes to her character. And then just blames it on her because she's not right in the head, clearly. But yeah, she's the one that started it all and I just think it was really cute because I had this sheep figure and I didn't know what to customize it as and I was like, oh, I remember Happy Tree Friends watching that in freaking middle school. <laughs> that did not scar me for life. That did not get me involved into love and gore art. Okay, let's move on. Coming in at 12 and the final custom of the Happy Tree Friends for the series so far that I've made is the Nutty Custom. I really love how he turned out, especially that eye. I had no idea how I was going to do that, and I had a bunch of these fake eyes from Halloween that I bought at Michael's, and just including that, I feel like really captured his character, and I glued little candy on him, he's got a donut on his tail, and even a little cake by him, because he just loves candy so much, and he just looks crazy. I mean, look at that face. That's the face that of a guy who's going to kill you. Or I should say, of a squirrel that's going to kill you over a piece of candy. Now that's insane. But yeah, I really love how he turned out. I think he came out really cute. <laughs> Even though that face. That face. But yeah, compared to all the other customs of the Happy Tree Friends, I would say he's my favorite. Just for the details I added and the eye. I don't know why that eye. I just love it so much. <laughs> it fits him. Because he does have one crazy googly eye. So coming in at number 11 is my regular figure, Littlest Pet Shop figure of Chewy. And that, again, I know this is my pet guinea pig. You guys are all probably freaking out. Why is he lower on the list? And well, it's just because I do like this guinea pig figure, but it's weird shake. It's from that set, of, this was from that phase that, um, of that little pet shop figures no one really cared for. I mean, look at this body. I mean, he's got that potato booty, but look at that body. That's not a guinea pig body. A guinea pig body is fat. There's supposed to be a fat furry potato. This is not a fat furry potato. It's a big headed potato, but not a fat furry potato. But he still came out pretty cute in my case. All right, we're up to the final 10. The big countdown from 10. And coming in at that number is Okay, this one I might have to hold because I do not want to stand. <laughs> this was my very first Littlest Pet Shop custom. And it's based off of me if I was like a My Little Pony. So this is technically Chicky456 and I did use her as like a mascot for the channel for some time. Hang on, can I get her to stand? Okay, I just can't spin it, sadly. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's the first custom, so of course she's going to be higher on the list. But again, too, was being the first custom I have improved over time. And I don't really use her as a mascot anymore. The glasses are too came out pretty weird. I used wire, and they're hot glued on the face. Um, another kind of backstory to this, just like the crimson, 
little, um, it's like the Crimson Custom, is this figure I actually found on the floor of the hospital we took my grandma to when she wasn't feeling good. And that's when we found out she had stomach cancer. And this was on the floor. I looked around. It was like in the hallway. Um, there was no kids or anything anywhere. So I do feel bad for whoever lost this. But I decided to pick it up. I took it home, washed it, and that's what basically started my whole channel. So I mean, it's kind of like a sad, happy story. Having this, finding this pony at the hospital that my grandma was taken to is what also started me into getting into customizing. So it's kind of like a sweet, sad story in a way. And to whoever the child that dropped this, I'm sorry. But just think, you helped start my channel. I'm going to include 9 and 8 together. Because they are brothers. And that is Horace coming in at number 9 and Roba coming in at number 8. Yes, I was a fan of the Problem Solvers. I know that was a show pretty much everyone else on the world and on Earth hated because of the style. And I thought too it was bad, like so bad that I had to watch it. And of course I got drug into it. <laughs> Horace comes in at number nine because he was kind of an easier custom to paint. I believe he's a bear. And I think his sweater came out really cute. It was also working kind of I think around my time, my first time working with clay on a custom. So I, I really do like how it turned out. And then Roba comes in at number eight just because of how much detail he had to go into on the suit and it came out really good. I really love how he turned out. And I used this otter custom because it had the perfect head shape for him. And his head can come off. I know that's horrifying, but that also helped when customizing this little guy. And I do just again love the detail that went into painting his suit. They're the problem solvers too. I still have to make Alfie. I still have to make him. I don't know. I haven't found a figure that would work for him, but I have to make him somehow. They need Alfie. They're not the problem solvers without Alfie. Coming in at number seven is my Courage the Cowardly Dog custom. I really love how he turned out. He looks really cute. I love the little spots that I did on the back of his head and even little extra details on him. His face also looks really sweet, just how he has that sad, scared puppy dog look, like as we all know Courage has. But overall, I think he came out really cute. And I just love those big, sad puppy dog eyes on him. And coming in at number six is my Kumala custom. This was a suggestion by my friend Joey to make a Pokemon custom. And I had this Koala, little, um, little pet shop figure, and I didn't know what to customize her into. So I thought, hey, the Pokemon Kumala would be cute. I really love it too because I actually used a real stick for her to hold on to. And uh, um, I was going to cut off like the hair and the bow, but I decided to keep it just to be like extra detail. I did end up gluing her on a base because I, at first I didn't and she would just keep falling over and over and over anytime I put her on the shelf. So she can finally sit right now. <laughs> um, I know the Pokemon's eyes are always closed. We do not know what the eyes look like at all in the game, but I decided to kind of do like a little theory on that and I gave her a red eye just to make it creepy. Like it would be creepy that, you know, here it's a cute little fluffy koala, but then when it opens its eyes, it's just like bright red, scary eyes. I mean, have you heard what these animals sound like? They can go from sounding like cute little clown hogs to freaking demons. Like, that would be scary if this Pokemon sounded just like that. Like, that would be horrifying. <laughs> so, but yeah, I do love the idea that um, I gave her a creepy red eye. Just to um, 
add more detail and kind of like what I would think the Pokemon's eyes would look like if they ever opened them. So we're finally down to the final five and coming in at number five is my Spongebob and Gary custom. I made this in tribute to the creator after I found out he passed away because Spongebob was somewhat of a childhood show of mine. I did actually enjoy watching it growing up. It's definitely been known for its memes. It's definitely been known worldwide. It's just one of those childhood shows you do love. But anyways, I think this custom came out really cute. I love the little pineapple I added, along with making him look like he's standing on a sandy beach. That might be hard to see. <laughs> and Gary came out cute too. He just kind of looks weird because of how this figure is. You know, how his eyes are. And this just doesn't have that, so he kind of looks a little bit weird. The shell came out really pretty. I really like how that turned out. But I think the Spongebob figure came out really cute. I didn't use a fish because I thought that would be kind of too easy and just too, like, obvious. But this, I say, came out a lot cuter, especially since this turtle figure has um, a squarish head shape, which matches him perfectly. But overall, I would say this figure is definitely cute and it's definitely one of my favorites. I just think it's overall cute with the little scenery I added with Spongebob. And coming in at number four is, yes, the third and final custom of my guinea pig, Chewy. And I'm including his whole set here, because this is why I really love this custom, because I was able to include, give him into like this little pet cage I had. I even got him a little pepper. He loved his green peppers. This one's red though, but he loved red peppers as well. He's got like, of course this is not a suitable cage for a guinea pig. This is definitely too small. That's definitely too small. But overall, I think the reason I really love this figure compared to my other two is this looks like him. He's a furry little chubby potato boy and it just looks really cute. I love his little face, how he looks. He's so fluffy and adorable and I just really love overall how he came out. And again, I really just love the little cage scenery I'm able to put him in and have him sitting on top of my shelf. He just looks so cute. And that's why, compared to the other two, he's this one's my favorite. And coming in at number three is another Pokemon custom. Gladion from Pokemon Sun and Moon and Sun and, um, and Ultra Sun and Moon. This was another suggestion by a friend of mine, and I think this came out really cool. I love how he looks. I love how his jacket looks on him, and I even gave him like the little red backpack side thing he has. I also used actually paper for his hair, which I think actually worked a lot better than using clay. This was again, he was around of one of my first customs too, like again, I know a lot of them, I feel like I said that was a lot of the customs, but this was around the time too when I was really working on customizing, and I didn't really want to use clay or didn't know how I would sculpt it, but I think the paper worked really well. And I know he does not have this, but I did it as like an extra little bonus and to make him edgy. Um, I gave him like scratches across his one eye. He's got like scars. Cause he's, he is a cat figure, so you know, he's probably gotten into a few cat fights. And I really just like how he came out overall. I love how the jacket looks. I even gave him his little piercings. I think he just came out really cute, even though he's supposed to be this edgy boy. Okay, the final two. Can you guess who it is? If you've seen all my custom videos, you might be able to narrow it down. Coming in at number two is my Squidward Suicide, or the Red Mist custom. I just really love how creepy this is. I also really love how he just looks like a creepy version of Bold and Brash, just the way that nose is. I had this octopus figure and I had no idea what I would customize it into, but after finding out that Spongebob technically made this canon. Like, I was- I had to get onto- I had to make a custom of him. And I think he's just really cool and creepy. I love the blood splatter on him. It's kind of funny too, because I heard too now that the show changed it. They thought it was too scary, so they changed it. And I remember reading a comment on that video. As they said, do they not realize they just created their own creepy pasta lost episode thing? Because there were clearly kids who've seen this version, the creepy version. We've all seen it online. 
and now they changed it and those kids are probably gonna be like wait a minute wasn't it this creepy image <laughs> so you see they kind of just created their own lost episode their lost creepy pasta episode unless they had planned that that'd be weird but yeah so this just has like a lot of lore behind it i also too squidward's suicide was um one of my first creepy pastas i think i came across online on youtube when i would just watch videos of like the top 10 or just coming across um scary images and this the original image used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. I would be so afraid of seeing that. Just the eyes freaked me out so much. That along with the Jeff the Killer image. And coming in at number one, please do not think I am a weirdo or a freak for loving how this figure came out. Is my burnt, is my experimental burnt Littlest Pet Shop figure. I really love how this came out. It was a Halloween Chicktober themed video and I just really love how it came out with how it looks like burnt raw hamburger meat. I had a bunch of those little burger cats from that series. Like I, that's, I kept getting those over and over again. I had like seven of them and I'm just like, you know what? I'll take one of them and test burning it because why not? And it just came out really creepy and I love the little scenery I added with the little skulls and the keys and the little bottle of blood and then even the eye but yeah this is my favorite one because it was actually fun to do even though it was pretty dangerous with using fire please please younger viewers if you're watching this don't do that but yeah it was a fun experiment to kind of test out i also ended up making another version of it for my cousin because she really likes the creepy stuff as well so it's got a little brother, or sister, or twin. So yeah, this one wins number one, just because it looks creepy. I love seeing it sit up on the shelf. It's definitely something that would probably catch your eye compared to the other ones. And it's just so out of normal, I would say, compared to the other ones. Because the other ones are just cute little critters, or, you know, fluffy characters, and then you just got this thing sitting up staring at you. Okay. Time to bring some old-fashioned outro with my old mascot. Anyways guys, thank you again so much for watching this video. I will be having two more in the future, ones of my Little Pet Shops figures from my Mr. Men series and Little Miss series. Then I will be doing um, a countdown to my favorite My Little Pony customizations I have done. This one was just of my Little Pet Shop figures that I have done over the years. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Do you guys like um, how I put them in order? Or was there a certain one you would have wanted to see as number one compared to the creepy cat one? Just let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day. Stay tuned for the next countdown videos.